but uh, tell me something about you. Uh, when did you start your career, and how do you enjoy this kind of uh, yeah. job? Yeah, yeah. Well, I started uh, my career with the UN, with the United Nations, 20 years ago. Exactly this, uh, 20 years ago, in 1993. Uh, at that time, the UN was preparing for a big conference on population and development in Cairo, in Egypt, and that was held in 1994. And uh, and I was recruited in a secretariat that helped preparing for this uh, for this conference. So I I started from there, and then I, I moved up the ladder. Uh, in, in UNFPA, um, at some point was a deputy representative in Tanzania, went back to the to headquarters, um, worked a lot on UN reform, on the reforming of the United Nations and how the UN system can work better together. And then in 2007, I became the uh, UNFPA representative here in, uh, in Bangladesh, so that's, uh, that's six years. If we talk about some foreign posting, so there is, you know, I, I don't know whether it is joke or fact, uh, when they got uh, posting here in Bangladesh, they, they start cry, yeah. <laughs> and when they the, the, yeah, when they leave, they start uh, well, crying. Well, actually, it's interesting. So, what about Arthur? I remember uh, at that time, six years ago, that uh, Bangladesh was offered, and I actually thought immediately that's an interesting uh, assignment because the, the, the issues that UNFPA is dealing with: uh, population, family planning, maternal health, gender equality. These are issues that are real here in Bangladesh and actually I tell my colleagues very often that if you work for UNFPA you should actually work at least one tour of duty here in Bangladesh because it's every day I'm reminded why we are here so I didn't cry when I came here but I will definitely cry uh, when I leave because it has been a, a fantastic assignment for me uh, both personally and, and professionally um, being here dealing with the issues that, as a, that concerns UNFPA population growth, the access to family planning, the, the ability of people to choose the number of children that they want, um, maternal health and making sure that women survive their pregnancy and their childbirth, issues related around gender, child marriage, violence against women. These are issues that are very prominent here and, and where Bangladesh has made a lot of progress. So it's not just that it is an issue and, or a problem. It's actually a country that makes progress, and it's, it's, it's nice to be part of that, to feel that a little bit we've contributed to, um, to that. And, and I think personally it's very nice to be part of, the, even though for six years, the history of Bangladesh, helping the, the little that I could do uh, to move this country forward. So, uh, no, not crying when I came here, but definitely crying when I leave. Oh, thank you. Can you share some of the good stories, mm. uh, what you uh, what remind? Right. Well, let me share two stories with you. One is um, uh, very early on I visited the Dhaka Medical College Hospital where UNFPA is supporting a, a fistula center. Fistula is really a, a, a devastating condition for women, often happen because of prolonged labor during the delivery. And I, I met a young girl there who started to sing um, uh, for, for me, for us who were there. And, and but the the, the joy in her eyes and, and the fact that, was, that she was so happy because she was, she was repaired, her fistula was repaired and she was able to, uh, to move out very quickly after my visit, go back to her village and basically got her life back. And this was a very emotional experience for me very early on in my life, uh, in, my, in my tenure here in, in Bangladesh. And that was something that, that, that I thought, wow, we, we, we can actually do something. Uh, very often development and the investments that we do is long term and you don't see the impact but with, when it comes to obstetric fistula you actually see the impact right there by, by, you know, by repairing, uh, surgically repairing these women. The second story was not so long ago, I was in Tagugao and, um, what, and that's, we have a program there to reduce maternal and, and newborn uh, mortality and every maternal death is being investigated and uh, it's called the maternal death audit so what you basically do you're going to revisit why did this did this woman die and this was a case uh, of a woman who had um, the, the, the feet she was she was delivering but I mean she was in labor but the feet first and they called in a local um, a traditional yeah, birth attendant and traditional midwife start to pull on the legs to try to get it out, didn't work, um, that woman actually fled, 
the scene because she couldn't deal with it. And um, then the woman basically died. The family then started to call the ambulance. And uh, and then at some point they, they, they found out that the woman actually hadn't died. So they were still hopeful that she could be rescued. But then by the time the ambulance came, she had she had died. But the story was, what we do is then we also involve the community. And I was sitting there with, uh, the, with the community. And I remember that, that she had one surviving boy. And he was five. And while we were talking about what happened to his mom, he clutched his dad so hard. He was sitting in front. His dad was there too. And he was holding his dad. And that was... That was very emotional because you thought, wow, this should not happen. This should really not happen. Uh, this woman didn't have to die. If this happens in, in, you know, with the feet first, bring her to the hospital. She gets a cesarean section. Mother survives. The child survives. And, of course, her surviving children uh, are better off. And I think this was something like, yes, this is so important. This is, this is what we do. This is really what we do. We have to make sure that these women survive because we know what to do. We know that these women can survive. So for me, this whole you know, investment in saving women's lives, in making sure that no woman dies while giving life, is, is such an important drive for me personally to... Um, so after that incident, what kind of program did you take? I'm very happy with what we've been seeing over the years when I was here is the introduction of uh, midwives. The global evidence is really that if you want to reduce maternal mortality, really you need to have a dedicated cadre of midwives, certified, interna certified midwives, meaning midwives who have been trained in accordance with international standards. Now, that took quite some time of lobbying and advocating for, and that's understandable because, you know, introducing a new cadre is not an easy thing. But I'm so happy and proud that Bangladesh in the end did decide that that's the way to go um, and I've always said if you want to be a middle income country you want to be a modern country let's also have modern solutions let's not have poor solutions for poor women poor women have the right to have access to quality we have the, op we have the, 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 the obligation to make sure that we come with the right solutions uh, and also invest in that even if it means sometimes that it is a bit more expensive that's okay if it helps a woman survive her pregnancy or her delivery. And I think that is such an important part. And, and Bangladesh then, and I was so proud when the Prime Minister then announced in 2010 that as a start we would introduce 3,000 midwives by 2015. Of course we need much more. We need 21,000 ultimately. But it's a start. It's the right thing to do. And as UNFPA we, of course, you know, have supported this from, from the very beginning. Uh, and this is very important. Reducing maternal mortality further will depend on improving access to skilled delivery assistance and emergency care, and on getting more women to use these services. A joint government and United Nations project is helping Bangladesh develop new ways to meet this challenge. UNFPA, the UN Population Fund, is collaborating in this effort with the World Health Organization and UNICEF, with funding from the United Kingdom, the European Union and Canada. The project has refurbished medical facilities and trained health workers at various levels in four of the country's 64 districts and is expanding to seven more districts. A key aim is to provide free maternal health care during pregnancy, childbirth and the postnatal period, including skilled delivery assistance close to where women live. The other example that I think is, is important too is the, the revitalization of family planning. When I came here six years ago, many people said, oh, I, I don't hear anything about family planning anymore. So we started to talk about that, to say it is important that we revitalize the family planning program, but not in a way that we probably did in the past, where the, the solution was a one-size-fits-all solution. What, we, what we're saying to the government is, the problem with family planning is not the same everywhere. Some regions and some parts of the country are doing very well. Some parts are not. And it is in those areas that you need to invest, particularly in Silet Division and the Chittagong Division. Those are the, the areas of the country that, is, that are lacking behind. And where it is important that people are being sent, where money is being sent, you know, meaning there's being invested in those areas. 
And I think we've seen that movement in, in the government. I'd say, yes, we understand that there are issues, there are problems in those particular areas where we need to invest our man, man, you know, manpower and, uh, or person power and, and money to get it done. Um, and so, uh, you know, this is an important thing for us as an international organization to push these issues. Um, Arthur, don't you think that uh, mm, this issue needs more aggressive media campaign, like revitalizing the uh, family planning uh, campaign? But nowadays, um, if you just uh, go to the village, the, yeah. the adolescent, they don't even hear yeah. what is that. It's, so it's an interesting question. I, I <sighs> the awareness about family planning in Bangladesh is actually quite high. So if you ask people, even in remote areas, they, they, they've heard about family planning. The second, so that's one, so there's a high awareness. Two, there's of course relatively low fertility. So the family planning program in Bangladesh has been extremely successful. Um, when Bangladesh became uh, independent in 71, on average women got six, six and a half children. Today it's a little more than two, 2.2, 2.3, 2 which is which is remarkable by any standard. So in that sense, the program has been extremely successful. What needs to happen, I think, is that family planning for a long time was pushed as a as a way of reducing fertility. That battle you won. That battle is done. No, I mean the younger generation, believe me, will never get four children anymore. It's not going to happen. Yeah, that's, that's, the that's, that's the reality. That's the reality. Now, what we need to promote is more family planning. One, family planning as a lifestyle, mm -hmm. not as an issue of I have six and I need only two. Mm -hmm. So, as a lifestyle issue, I think we need to do much more in the urban areas because the family planning program of this country is a is a real pro poor mm -hmm. program, meaning it's targeting the rural mm -hmm. poor, not so much your urban middle class not so much young people. Still, it's surprising to me how many young couples entering into a marriage having no information whatsoever, even to this day, have probably heard about a condom yeah. and probably heard about a pill, but that's about it. So the family planning campaign needs to be much more sophisticated, aimed at younger people, aimed at diversifying the method mix, meaning it's not just a pill, it's not just a condom, there are other m means of reduce or, or of controlling your fertility. And I think that's the discussion that we are having with, with the government, is exactly of, let it be a young, smart campaign, uh, not your traditional campaign of about two children is enough, um, or one is even better, but it's, it is really about lifestyle. Family planning is all about the uh, lifestyle. lifestyle. Yeah, that's, that's very you know uh, smart and very. Right. You've seen so many young people. They're they're articulate, they're smart. You can't address them with old-fashioned slogans. You have to address them in a modern way through a modern campaign that is appealing to them. Uh, and, and I think that's the, that's the challenge I think that the government Are has. Are you trying to do something on the campaign? We, we actually um, working with government and we, we, we're trying to revitalize it again um, to have a, let's say a modern campaign around with a modern slogan um, as a targeting young couples. Um, at the same time, uh, we want to reach young through the schooling system uh, young people with whatever the term is, life skills, but, but including reproductive health information. That's more on quality life. Definitely. Yeah. It's also ensuring that young people, yeah, as that, know what they're getting into, knowing their bodies, uh, knowing what they can do to plan their families. And I think that's, that's very important. I think Bangladesh is, is ready for that. <laughs> গরিবের ঘরে মেয়েদের লেখাপড়ার কি দাম কোন কি লেখাপড়া করা তো অনেক সম্মানের ব্যাপার কিন্তু মায়ের বিয়ের বয়স তো পার হয়ে যাইতেছে না আপনারা ভুল করতেছেন বরং কম বয়সে বিয়ে দিলে মায়েরা অনেক ক্ষতি হইতে পারে লেখাপড়া বন্ধ হয়ে গেলে সে নিজের ও সমাজের কোনোই কাজে লাগবে না 
তাছাড়া আয় রোজগার তো হবেই না সন্তান লালন পালনও করতে পারবে না এছাড়া বিবাহিত জীবনে স্বামীর সাথে বোঝাপড়ায় সমস্যা হইতে পারে শুধু তাই না সন্তান জন্ম দিতে গিয়া মায়ের মৃত্যু হইতে পারে বাবা তুমি আমার বিয়ে দিও না দেখো ওই বাড়ির তুলিরে অল্প বয়সে বিয়ে দেওয়ায় বাচ্চা জন্ম দিতে গিয়ে মরে গেল আমার বান্ধবী অর্চনা সারা দিন যৌতুকের জন্য মাই খায় ওরা কেউ ভালো নাই আমি অনেক পড়াশোনা করতে যাই আমার নিজের পায়ে দাঁড়াইতে দাও আমি শহরে গিয়ে বাংলাদেশ the UNFPA is working. The issue that we are traditionally dealing with on family planning, on gender equality, are sensitive and so difficult. In Bangladesh, people are very open. Yes, we probably are a conservative society, but if you talk to people, they are very open. And I look back on that as a very, very you know, rewarding time for me. But I'm also extremely hopeful um, because... I sometimes have to tell even Bangladeshi that your country is moving in the right direction. Yes, there are many problems, as in other countries as well. But look at, look at statistics. Look at your story. There are more girls in school than ever. They are more literate. There are more children surviving the first month, the first year, of the five, first five years of their lives. There are women, more and more women surviving their pregnancies. The number of women dying is coming down. Your fertility is very low. Your economic growth is phenomenal. So, you know, you have lots to look back on, which is very good about Bangladesh. So I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic about where this country is going, despite probably all the problems. I often, these are hiccups in the long uh, history of, of a country. The, yes, they will, you know, you will have these, but the, the trend in Bangladesh is upwards, and Bangladesh is being hailed many times internationally for its success uh, and, and rightly so because it is real it's not it's not, a, not it manipulated is, no not it is real yeah, yeah. And, and I think that is, uh, is for me very very rewarding to be part of an organization that has to some extent helped and contributed to, to, to that if we talk about the Bangladesh as a nation what inspires you I, I must you know uh, say yeah well, my children always say, and I, and I agree with that, I mean, no matter what the situation is, you will always find Bangladeshi people smiling. And it's the most resilient population I've ever met. I still see people smiling. I still, yes, there are probably, as I said, they are, they are probably thinking, okay, we could do without, but it's not the main thing. It, it's, I was always told um, that, oh, an election year in Bangladesh is difficult. Well, yes, it turned out to be uh, probably a tough year, but as I said, I don't see this as necessarily something that um, that will, you know, will will hamper uh, everything. everything. Yes, I mean. Uh, so I think you are going to miss Bangladesh in this uh, election year. Uh, <laughs> uh, missing Bangladesh. Well, I'm going to miss Bangladesh for sure, with with everything that's there. I mean, it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's 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 part of of this country. It's not going to affect my my look on on Bangladesh at all. You will you know will have your elections, and uh, and eventually this country will move uh, will move on with whatever. Because and uh, that's also what I find. Despite all the things that are happening, people are first and foremost Bangladeshis. They feel very strong about their language, about their culture. That, yes, and patriotism, that I think is still, that, that is really remarkable. If you given chance ever mm -hmm. uh, to come again or serve for Bangladesh in any capacity, so will you? I definitely would love to come back to Bangladesh. Uh, just to see, you know, how the country is doing, really. And, uh, and, and not only that, my, my two children, my two daughters, basically grew up here. My youngest was four and my oldest was seven when we came here. And they're now 13 and 10. So they, they grew up here. So I'm sure we, we would love to come back as a family just, just to see how the country is doing. Um, and, and that I, I'm optimistic that I, I, I will have that chance, hopefully in life to, to come back and see how Bangladesh 
is, is very well. If we just talk about our uh, you know, program like uh, mm -hmm. Connecting Bangladesh, mm -hmm. so um, if you please say something, why you got involved with this project right. with ATI News? Right. No, we, we, we are very, very happy to, uh, to team up with, with you uh, around this program Connecting Bangladesh because for us, I, I, who are so used to work at, let's say, with policy makers and at, at the policy level, it's often very difficult to connect our issues with real people. And of course, one of the things we want to do through our support is actually giving real people in, in rural areas access and, and the opportunity to actually connect with what's happening in their country. And particularly for those who actually don't have normal, normally access to information and services. So when we were discussing this, your, your program came up and saying that, well, that is probably a formula that will help us connecting our issues or the issues that, that UNFP is concerned about, and, and that's also of concern to, to Bangladesh itself, with what are people experiencing. Because I often tell also to my staff that what we do is, is real to people. It's, it's not just an abstract thing. You, you start with the human interest story. Why, why is... Well, tell the story of a fistula person. Tell the story of someone who lives in a shelter home uh, that we are providing because she's, uh, you know, feeding her, her family, abusive family. These are real stories. And somehow we want to connect with that. And what we also see, of course, that many people in Bangladesh still, even though there is a lot of access to, uh, with mobile phones and all that, still a lot of people have, don't have that. Still don't have that. So your formula of, of going to a random village, picking up an issue, and connecting it with experts and people in, in the studio is, is a wonderful formula. The issues of you know, good access to, to maternal health services and what it means if you don't have access to that is real. Uh, issues of, of young people uh, that you know, access to information, access to services related to reproductive health and sexual health is real. Um, so if we could connect um, what we try to do with what's happening you know, in people's lives is, is really important. So we are very, very happy uh, to team up with, uh, with, your, with your program uh, to this. Yeah. <laughs> যারা আসলে কি জিনিস শরীরের মধ্যে একটা জিনিস থাকে যেমন রশি দিয়ে একটা জিনিস বেঁধে একটা জায়গায় রাখে জরাই কিন্তু শরীরের ঠিক মাঝখানে ফলে এই বাচ্চা বের করার সময় যখন টানা হাসড়া করা হয় তখন এই রশিগুলো ঢিল হয়ে যায় ঢিলে ঢিল হয়ে এটা জরা ওটা নিচের দিকে নেমে আসে ফলে প্রথম কথা হচ্ছে যে অল্প বয়সে বিয়ে করা যাবে না কোনো কারণে যদি দুর্ঘটনাবশত হোক এটা কাম্য নয় যদি বিয়ে হয়েও যায় তাহলে কোনো ভাবেই অল্প বয়সে বাচ্চা নেওয়া যাবে না আরেকবার মনে করিয়ে দেয় যে ফিস্টুলা নিয়ে আমরা তো আলাপ করলাম নিশ্চয়ই আপনি যেমন বললেন যে আপনার গ্রামে অনেক মানুষ অনেক মেয়েরাই বাল্যবিবাহের শিকার অনেকের জড়ায়ের সমস্যাটা একটা বড় সমস্যা কিন্তু এই সমস্যা অনেকের আছে যে সারাক্ষণ প্রস্রাব বা পায়খানায় এটা একটু একটু করে লিক হয় তাকে ঘরে রাখতে দেয় না দুর্গন্ধ ইত্যাদি ঢাকা মেডিকেল কলেজে একটা ফিস্টুলা সেন্টার আছে এবং এটা ইউএনএফপি এ সহযোগিতা দিচ্ছে এবং এই ফিস্টুলা সেন্টারে কিন্তু এই ধরনের রোগীরা পুরোপুরি সুস্থ হন সুতরাং ঢাকা মেডিকেল কলেজের ফিস্টুলা সেন্টারে আপনারা যাদের এরকম সমস্যা আছে তাদেরকে দূর দূর না করে তাদেরকে ঘর থেকে বের করে না দিয়ে তাদেরকে চিকিৎসার জন্য একটু সহযোগিতা করবেন জানাবেন